Our governor works. He probably left the house to go to the gym about 5, 5.30 this morning. That'd be about right, yeah. And you'll be getting home tonight, probably around 10 o'clock tonight. Plus or minus. <laughs> Plus or minus. And that's, that's our governor's work day. So we are blessed to have him serving in the corner office. And governor, thank you so much for coming down here to the first high school district. great pleasure several times to meet your beautiful first lady Lauren as, as we both know and many of the gentlemen in this room know we don't exactly we, we may we may call all sorts of shots at work but when we get home uh, the, the real power behind the throne rests with our wives if we go like three days in a in a marriage doesn't matter you're right dear <laughs> It's a gift for the First Lady. Oh, really? What's that great? Nice yes. <laughs> gift in remembrance yeah. of us on Cape Cod. Thank you. Consulting my wife first. 
As a matter of fact, I don't make any decision without consulting my wife first. But looking back on it now, two years as a candidate, almost coming up on one year in office, I'm very proud of what I've been able to accomplish as a state representative here, representing the Mid-Cape area in the 1st Brown School District. I'm also very proud to have been, from the start, a partner to the baker Polito administration, which has been an absolute blessing to work with up in Boston. The governor was talking to us about the issues with snow, and we all know they were well reported, and as the governor relayed, every bit of that uh, that was going on up in Boston with the MBTA crippled the city of Boston. One of the issues that we faced down here on the Cape, some of you know, not everyone knows, was that we were coming up on the first weekend in uh, March, which here in the town of Yarmouth, the first weekend in March is usually the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And we had icebergs about 10 feet high on the sidewalks. And I reached out to the Baker Polito administration and expressed to them the importance of this particular event for our community. Everybody, I see all the heads nodding up and down. Down here, we know that that is an <laughs> the, the select one from Yarmouth, Tracy Poston, the one that's over there cheering very loudly. We all know how important that is to our economy down here, and how it's a real kickoff to the tourist season for us, and how important uh, how important it is, as it was related to me, I related it to the uh, Baker Polito administration. And ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you, those of you who made the parade, what did the sidewalks look like on that day? Beautiful. They were absolutely perfect. And that's the kind of partnership that I get working with Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito up in Boston. One of the things that's been well reported is the work that we've been doing um, that I, I've been doing, as well as even more importantly, the work the Baker Polito administration has been doing through the HHS on the addiction crisis. Who here does not think that addiction is one of the top issues facing the, the Commonwealth? Who here thinks it's not? Okay, so everybody in this room thinks, sees and recognizes how important addiction is. I'm very proud of the work that I was able to that I was able to accomplish. We just uh, the governor just signed last week a bill criminalizing the trafficking of fentanyl, which up until he, uh, up, up until that point had not been criminalized. If you were arrested with a tractor trailer load of fentanyl, the most that you could be charged with was possession with intent to distribute, which is a lower level crime. Myself and the state representative from Salem, Paul Tucker, filed a bill which dropped the ball rolling, which ultimately led to the filing, the passing, and ultimately the signature from the governor on the fentanyl trafficking legislation. And we were able to get that through because not only the hard work that we did in the legislature, but also the support that I received from the governor. We thank you, Jeff. <laughs> That's all the endorsement that I need right there. Thank you very much. I also want to let you know what supporters of our schools the Baker Polito, the Baker Polito administration has been. After taking office and recognizing that there was a crisis that uh, was occurring in many of the regional school districts because of the 9C cuts to regional school transportation that occurred. I see, once again, a lot of heads around the room nodding. We all recognize what a hit that was. The Tennessee Yonemouth Regional School District alone suffered over $400,000 in cuts to their budget. That's one of the first things that was brought up when I took office. And I brought it up to the Baker Polito administration. Close to half that money was restored within a matter of a few weeks because of the work and the partnership that we have working with an administration that cares and they care about public education. Let's keep going on and on and on. So the work the Lieutenant Governor is doing uh, in the uh, Community Compact Cabinet, which Barnstable just signed, and I encourage my partners in Yarmouth, Dennis and Brewster as well, to look into signing as well and joining in an agreement with the administration which will build more openness in government. Do we think we need more openness in government? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's your money. It's your money. But it also puts our municipalities in a position where they can be rewarded for their efforts and they can kind of get a head start on grant funding. So again, I, uh, my, my folks here from Yarmouth, from Dennis, from Brewster, I encourage you to please look into this and please make this a priority. I would love nothing more. If you want to, if you want to do me a favor, and if you want to do the people in your town, more importantly, the residents in your town a favor, 
join the community compact cabinet. I would love to have all four towns in the first principal district as members of the community compact cabinet. But there's still so much left to do. I was being interviewed earlier by a reporter from Cape Cod Broadcasting, and he was asking about what we've been able to accomplish and why am I running for re-election. And the reason I'm running for re-election is because there's still so much left to do. We've criminalized trafficking in fentanyl. I'm looking forward to, very shortly, when the legislature gets back in session, to debating the uh, opioid legislation, the comprehensive opioid legislation that was offered by Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito. I'm looking forward to getting that on the floor and getting that passed through, which is going to have some innovative, outside-of-the-box ideas, which is exactly what we need at this point, because what we've been doing up to this point, let's face it, folks, it hasn't been working. We have so much work yet to do to make sure that our schools here on Cape Cod are no longer hobbled by the Chapter 70 funding formula that, like many of the resort areas across the country, uh, we, we see that the prices of real estate are so high and that negatively impacts what we get for state aid. When I speak to some of my representatives' uh, colleagues up in the State House, and they're telling me that 100% in Chapter 70 support for their public schools isn't enough. And I look at it down here on the Cape, where the typical uh, Chapter 70 support our schools receive is 16 to 17%. There's a problem. So there's still so much more yet to do, folks. And every one of you coming out here tonight, you're, 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 you're part of the wind in my sails right now and going forward. It's going to be a very busy re-election year coming up here in 2016. We have not only my race, we have an open state senate seat. We have a congressional uh, election coming up as well. And we're going to need every one of you to stand with these candidates. Stand with these candidates. And speaking of, before we go forward, I got so excited about speaking to you. I just wanted to take a minute as well. I have to recognize some of our elected officials and some of those hardworking candidates. We have here with us today, we have Sheriff James Cummings. Election here in 2016, so let's please make sure that we give him some support. Is he still here? We have the former state senator and former sheriff of Worcester County, Guy Glotus. We have colleagues of mine from the legislature, State Representative Matt Moratori from the First Clinic District. Dave Baradian from the 9th Worcester District. Woo! And State Representative Steve Howitt from the 9th Bristol District. <laughs> Clerk of Courts, uh, correction, Register of Probate, Anastasia Wells Perino. <laughs> we have Barnesville Town Councilor John Flores. of the Barnesville Town Council and Kennedy. Attorney O'Keefe's office is Michael Trudeau, first assistant clerk. And our last GOP state committee woman, Judy Crocker. originally Rock Chamberlain from Dennis. <laughs> we have Jimmy Cruz from Falmouth. We have Fred Meany from Chester. 
Seattle. Mike Gleason from Yarmouth. And now as hardworking candidates, we have declared candidate for the Cape and Island District Senate seat, Anthony Schiavi. And we have two candidates for the 9th Congressional District on the Republican side, Mark Allegro. I think we managed to cover everybody, and if we didn't, mm -hmm. please accept my dearest apologies, and I'll take the swift kick in the pants later on. <laughs> this is what happens when you get so excited to get up here and speak, and speak without forgetting to get your wife up to make the presentation, <laughs> that I forgot to read these earlier, so please forgive that. But uh, one last thing, Governor, before you go, I have a gift for you from, as well, from the Yarmouth Chamber of Commerce, and this comes from Tracy Post and from the Board of Selectmen in the town of Yarmouth, and it's a... Uh, very nice fleece pullover. Thank you very much for coming.